Dr. Malouf is a cardiologist with over 45 years of experience in the medical field and a special interest in echocardiography, including 3D transesophageal echocardiography, intraoperative echocardiography, and valvular heart disease. Dr. Malouf has been at the Mayo Clinic since 1992, starting at the Florida campus. He transitioned to Rochester in 1999, where he has been serving as director of the Interventional Echocardiography Imaging Service, which is critical to guiding all structural heart disease interventions. He has four decades of international practice experience, including seven years in Saudi Arabia at the King Fahad National Cart Hospital in Riyadh, where he built a cardiology practice, and five years in the UAE as the lead physician of Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular Practice in Dubai. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Malouf. Dr. Malouf, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your background? Uh, I'm Dr. Yusuf Malouf. Uh, I'm a consultant cardiologist uh, at the Mayo Clinic, I, where I have served for 30 years. And uh, I'm currently chair of cardiology at uh, Sheikh Shahboot Medical City, uh, also known as SSMC in Abu Dhabi. And what is the Mayo Clinic's multidisciplinary approach for serious and complex cardiovascular conditions? Yeah, the, this is the Mayo Clinic uh, multidisciplinary approach uh, uh, involves a team approach uh, towards patient care, uh, keeping in mind that uh, we uh, the approach focuses on a uh, on the patient himself or herself. And uh, uh, it's uh, multiple teams that sometimes are needed in order to, um, uh, uh, to treat a patient and to obtain the best results. So it's a patient-centric approach, not a physician-centric approach. And uh, uh, the patient is involved in the decision-making. And uh, obviously, um, uh, there are multiple people who can be involved in the management of a particular patient depending on the complexity of the case. What areas of expertise in cardiology is the Mayo Clinic most renowned for treating and diagnosing? Well, um, uh, Mayo, is, uh, Mayo Clinic is well known across the spectrum for, for the entire spectrum of cardiovascular diseases, um, from uh, diagnosis, management, to cardiac surgery. And so uh, uh, there are experts in every uh, area of cardiovascular diseases. And uh, that's what makes the Mayo Clinic uh, cardiology or cardiovascular services uh, unique. What advances have there been in cardiovascular therapeutics and medications? Advances in therapeutics and medications. Well, uh, there have been major advances in therapeutics in, uh, uh, in the management of cardiovascular diseases and uh, just to name a few um, structural interventions, uh, uh, meaning that uh, now we're able to replace valves without actually opening up the chest without surgery, uh, just uh, by the use of catheters, what we call transcatheter therapeutics. And so the aortic valve can be replaced this way. The mitral valve can be repaired this way. The tricuspid valve can be repaired this way and can even be replaced this way. Uh, we also uh, have witnessed major uh, evolutions and advances in the management of uh, failed prosthetic valves, bioprosthetic valves. Uh, in the past, if, if a bioprosthetic valve failed, um, the only uh, the only management option available was to surgically replace that valve. Now also we can um, replace that valve uh, uh, through uh, transcatheter therapeutics with catheters um, and without the need to necessarily go in and open up the chest and subject the patient to open heart surgery. There, are of, there have also been advances in uh, medical therapies. Um, to cite one example, uh, a condition called hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Now there is a new drug that has been FDA approved and that uh, uh, addresses the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the main reason for the condition itself at the level of, at the cellular level. And this is something that was not available until just availability of this drug. 
We also have advances, major advances in the management of heart failure with new drugs that have been uh, made available, are FDA approved, are, uh, uh, are now readily available, and they're part of our management uh, armamentarium. So uh, we do have a wide spectrum of drugs that are now new, available, and uh, very effective uh, therapies. And uh, there have also been major advances among the drugs in the management of uh, uh, high cholesterol and uh, lipids. And so uh, we have now, we have gone from the pill to a biweekly to one monthly injection in, uh, in select patients where we give an injection of a medication and, uh, and that uh, medication can lower the cholesterol by the lipid, the LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol uh, significantly. And we're moving uh, with time towards from an injection to even addressing the, uh, the, uh, to gene therapy that addresses the, uh, the, uh, the fundamentals of the problem itself. And therefore, uh, and this applies to other disciplines in cardiology. So gene therapy is a big thing these days. And, uh, uh, and so this is another advance. Uh, in uh, in the management of heart disease. Uh, moreover, now we also have, uh, we are using artificial intelligence to predict uh, who is going to develop what down the road. So as an example, a simple electrocardiogram that uh, everyone has had uh, can predict down the road who is prone to develop a certain type of rhythm that is very common and is called atrial fibrillation. And so we're using artificial intelligence um, uh, these days more and more uh, in order to be able to figure out what their predictive value is and hopefully to prevent the disease from uh, occurring in the first place. So all of these advances have occurred over the past only few years. And uh, of course, they're the culmination of a lot of research, uh, but they are now a reality, uh, something that uh, would not have been possible uh, a few years ago. That's quite insightful and innovative. And what advances have there been in cardiovascular catheter-based interventions? Well, I, as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> the advances have to do with replacing valves and uh, with a catheter and not uh, through open heart surgery. And uh, so these advances started with replacing the aortic valve and uh, for pat in patients who have a severe narrowing of their aortic valve and now have transcended that to uh, include repairing and replacing the mitral and tricuspid valves and, uh, and, so, and also replacing uh, degenerated or bioprosthetic valves that are no longer functioning properly. And all of these are transcaster uh, uh, or uh, they are procedures that are done in the cardiac catheterization laboratory and not in the operating room. Well, thank you so much again, Dr. Maluf. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Uh, thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure and uh, thank you again.